Water temperatures across the Atlantic are the hottest ever observed this early in the year. Far outpacing the all-time heat back in 2023. The ocean is warmer now than ahead of the historic hurricane seasons in 2020. In 2005, we break down the prospects of this heat fueling an intense and awful hurricane season. The effects of Hurricane Ernesto already on the tropics tonight as Hurricane Barrel churns in the Caribbean. As David mentioned, it is now a Category 5 storm. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, is launching what they're calling an emergency response to reports of a particular species of fish spinning and then dying in southern Florida. In the shimmering blue waters of the Florida Keys, long the jewel of Florida's southern coast, a mystery lurks beneath the surface. Fish with the spins, flipping and spinning without stop. Well, the water temperatures are super warm out there, close to 90 degrees as we check out our sea surface temps. And it is steamy out there, that is for sure. It's still In this episode, we continue our journey up the Potomac to Washington, D.C. As we felt being 150 miles off the coast would protect us from a major hurricane.
Two eggs, Skipper? Three. Okay.
the uh, clearance issue we're encountering? Uh, so it's supposedly a vertical clearance is 135 feet, so we should have we should have no issues. We're at 68 feet air clearance, so uh, yeah, and, it's, and the channel's well marked. I even called the bridge tender when I was planning the, the route just to make sure that you know the data was accurate. As we come all the way up here and find out we couldn't get underneath it, would really suck. So we uh, we should be fine. You can see the markings at the base of the bridge that, that, that tell us where the main channel is. That's, so that's the main span um, dead ahead. So typically I'll take it slightly off center because they'll often have uh, like warning lights that hang down below. And in this case, I don't know, unless they hang down about 40 feet, we're fine. So I'll probably just do center, uh, take it dead, dead down the center. And uh, yeah, hopefully it's a, it still looks creepy. I'll just tell you, just, I still have a pucker factor when I go in, even, even though all the data says we're fine, I'm still always kind of looking up going, oh my God, please. So, uh, we're probably two thirds up the Potomac now from a navigation perspective to DC. Uh, we've, covered, we've covered probably about 55, 60 miles at this point. We got another 45 miles roughly. Uh, from here, we, uh, we take a bend to the northwest and then the river starts to narrow. Which, you know, hopefully, I've never done this, so hopefully it'll be really scenic ride and we won't have too many issues with current. Uh, but we caught a break with weather and uh, yeah, so it should be a pleasant ride all the way up to DC. It's, you know, like I would. This is the tidal swing is only about a foot. So that means that in the event of a hurricane, you typically don't have a big tidal swing, so that means you're far from the coast. The intent is, when you come this far north, well, you, and even, even points further north, now, um, the heat has got, it, it typically, it, it, starting from about of July and August, the wind dies, so there's no good sailing. And the heat, as we saw yesterday, becomes oppressive. And so we want, and we want to go visit family and friends in Europe for a little while. And I didn't want to have to, at the, at the threat of a hurricane, jump on a plane last minute and come back and take the sails off and really rig for hurricane. So we figured being this far up the river and this far off the coast, even if a Category 1 or Category 2 were to get dead on, you know, the Norfolk area, we're going to get uh, a bad storm here. You know, it's not going to be... 80, 90, 110, 120 mile an hour winds. It's highly unlikely. Is it possible in today's world? I suppose, but unlikely. So, it, that, and that's why. So that we can, I can have the peace of mind of leaving it kind of the way it is now, and not worry about having to rush back to do last minute hurricane prep, and then then leave. Or is that bad? So. so anyway, yeah. So we're tied up to a solid marina with floating docks. Go. The other thing is the tidal surge in the event of a hurricane, that's what usually destroys boats. You know, we may see in the event of a hurricane a four or five foot tidal surge. Their column should handle it, no problem. So the boat just rises up and comes down with the storm. So, a lot of effort to go through, but it's worth it to, for the peace of mind. You know, the thought of having this boat destroyed after we just went through all the repair after the lightning strike is just, yeah, not. I don't want to do that. So you just aim for the highest span? Yeah, they usually see the yeah. Uh, The columns on the on the water. As we've seen recently, especially in these waters, not a good time for your power to go out. <laughs> no, no I'm like, I typically slow down a little bit, but a lot of time currents and you get currents and eddies and by the at the bridge abutments, and so 
you don't want to be going too fast in case there's an issue, but you don't want to be going too slow so that you lose steerage. So you need to maintain enough power to make sure that uh, um, can we get you at the right speed. We're on a river and there's currents. Do you feel the current shifting as we go yeah. up river? Yeah, and I get, yeah, and I got I've got um, indicators on the charts as far as which what direction and speed of the currents. So um, so I just kind of keep an eye on that. And then, and then usually what I'll do is I'm on autopilot right now. I'll use autopilot to line it up. And then once we actually get a nearing, like just about to enter the, the bridge channel, I'll take it off autopilot so I can actually have a feel of the helm to get a sense of, because sometimes the autopilot's a little slow to respond um, when you get these weird currents underneath the bridge. So I'll, I'll, that's what I'll do in about a quarter mile. I'll start hand steering. I've seen guys get swept into the bridges. Not pretty. Seventy. Got it. Okay. Just we're at sixty-eight foot mass, so just making sure. Okay. All right. Thanks very much. Appreciate it. Come on, sir. Okay. You can see the lights flashing. Yeah. So it's those two large center columns, right? You know, getting in matches, but probably all told. Probably graded at about 900 miles. 900 miles? Wow. A week and a half. Wow, that's a lot. That's a lot. So if you're wondering why we're building tires, that would be why. Can you see the red buoy? I think it's right up here. And the green over on the other side. Okay. Of those towers. That's marking the piece of the middle section. That's the main channel, looks like. It's much lower than 170 feet, doesn't it? Yeah, I think it is an optical illusion kind of thing. romantic notion about sailing and about high sea adventure, but I've never really done a whole lot of it. So this is a bucket list opportunity for me. And on that alone, I'm utterly joyful because I got, how, how many people get to live out their dreams, right? So I'm grateful to you and Mike for that. It's been hot and I came here with a purpose to sort of chronicle 
the rising temperatures and its impact on the waters, on the atmosphere, and maybe tell a story, which is what I feel like I was put here to do. And the story is tracking woefully, alarmingly, in the way that I thought it would, which was that you guys headed out ahead of what's supposed to be the most intense hurricane season on record, and already records are getting smashed by barrel. As it luckily goes to the south while we continue north. But we rode up the Chesapeake past Tangier Island where I've been, and uh, it's sinking. The oceans are rising, and they're thinking there on the island that it's just a bunch of erosion, and that Donald Trump will save them from all of that. And I think, I, in fact, I think it's quite different. Um, and here we are now in the Potomac. The water's considerably greener, murkier. And as we're finding out up in Washington, D.C., we're poisonous because of the algae bloom. that's intoxicated the uh, uh, local reservoirs and made people have to boil their water. So the whole passage has been beautiful, ornate, adventurous, gleeful, joyful, and harrowing. It's like going up river in a Joseph Conrad novel or something, uh, Heart of Darkness, because no one really, really knows what lies ahead and how grim it can actually be. So I'm just grateful and happy in the moment. All right, we're gonna make we're gonna make one more round uh, of red of red buoy. Left Port Canaveral a week and a half ago. Um, we have I think, two nautical miles to the bridge. And then after the bridge, we have three miles to the wharf. And I think when uh, we arrive at the wharf, I'm going to cry with joy. It's been really hot. Um, it's now 101 degrees in the cabin. So just thrilled to get to our destination. And hopefully the captain's happy as well. We have one more bridge to get to underneath. This was the one I was a little bit more concerned about. So this is a bascule bridge, which means it could lift, but it doesn't. So this is the one I called the bridge tender and I was like, in the closed position, it's 74 feet. And our air clearance is 68. Well, what about the antenna? Uh, it, I think it's still, well, it's probably another two feet, so call it 70. So we'll have a three or four foot clearance. And I said, well, we got 68 foot plus antenna. He's like, now nah, you won't have any problem. So uh, now I'll look at the nearest tide station and see what the tide's going to be. Just that, but I think we're we're headed to runaway. It's a um, ebb tide now, meaning the tide's going out. So the tide's dropping. So I just need to find what it's going to be there, and we've got enough to find it. Now it'll be a little more of a pucker factor, you know, as we go into that. That's it. It'll look like we're going to get. So we're experiencing the heat advisories in effect for Dahlgren, Virginia, which is here where we are now, headed up river to the Potomac headwaters, where we hope it'll be at least 20,000 degrees cooler. That would be normal. Meanwhile, excessive heat watch in both Salt Lake City, Utah, where I was born, and in Malibu, California, where I now currently live, it's a balmy 75 degrees. That concludes our weather broadcast for today. Stay tuned. And this has been brought to you by Apple iPhone. Get one today. So how many miles? One and a half. And we should be getting there within about 15 minutes of low tide. Oh, good. So. Good. I mean, they're going to raise it. Yeah. Right? No. Well, going into it? Yeah. Parker factor, not. That's why I was saying Parker factor.
that's our lane. So those two rails with the lights on it, that's the, uh, that's the highest point of clearance. So what I'm going to do is come in and then I'll, I'll wait and then I'll angle off. So then we go, we line up on those lines and go in parallel with them and try to hold it dead center. I got it. Yep. Do you see again? The capital. been to Washington DC several times I've never approached it quite like this obviously upriver from the Potomac and it's interesting to see the monuments and everything still intact and to see that the blight doesn't start right away it's actually quite quaint and poetic in the way that Washington DC is supposed to be but there's jet planes taking off every five seconds spewing fuel and exhaust I have a people are out on power boats and we're living large here. What are you writing there, Skipper? Captain's Log. Captain's Log, entry. Arrived Wharf Marina, Washington, D.C. Now you get the engine hours. Congratulations. A hug and well done, Dave. Oh, well done. Well done. Mm -hmm. You did it. I did it. 900 miles in the bank. Mm. Congrats, team. Thank you. Get a room. <laughs> well, we have one, thankfully. And we can actually put it to good use now. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for everything. I'm glad you could join us. Good instruction. Big eye opening experience. Good. Bucket list. No hospital trips. Hey, the two happiest days in the sailor's life is the day they say, say goodbye to the shore, and the second is when 